Today in Master of Craft. An easy way to build a fire in a minute and not worry that it will be extinguished. A device for outdoor recreation, hiking and fishing, which should have been invented long ago. How did the North American Indians inspire the Ukrainian to create a portable turbo campfire? Our team is going on an adventure out to the open air to learn exactly how these unusual logs burn and discover what is so special about them. What is the difference between a man in the 21st century and a man born 21,000 years ago? Anthropological studies have shown that a child born so distant in the past could be brought up and educated just like a modern child, and nobody would notice the difference. That is, people who crossed the Bering Straits and later became North and South American Indians do not differ much from the current European, with the exception of the peculiarities of their way of life. Civilization has provided a generally safe environment, where there is always food, water, protection from bad weather and no need to constantly think about survival. That is, in the 21st century you can get a highly specialized education and become, for example, an astrophysicist, knowing that there are other people or devices that will provide for food and shelter. Someone studies the stars, someone bakes bread, someone creates TV programs. All the advantages of our civilization are specialization. 21,000 years ago, exactly the same people had the same objective – survival. Anyone of the Upper Paleolithic was able to provide themselves with food and water, find a safe place to sleep, protect themselves from predators and, most importantly, start a fire and support such a life. Of course, without matches, flammable liquids and a newspaper from the mailbox. In the 21st century, this skill is taught only in scout organizations. This is so that if the benefits of civilization suddenly become inaccessible, only a few million people out of 7 billion will at least somehow be prepared for this. Survival in uncivilized conditions has many aspects, but getting fire for heat and cooking is perhaps the main one. And thanks to a modern Ukrainian inventor, even most people that are not adapted to this basic element and never started a bonfire today can do this in a matter of minutes. We produce a portable turbo campfire called a Vognir. This is basically a fire from one log, which can be quickly ignited and it burns for a long time. Mikola Palamarchuk does not consider himself an inventor, he just perfected the ancient adaptation of the American Indians and established cereal production. Moreover, Mikola emphasizes that his turbo campfire has nothing to do with conventional firewood. When an ordinary log is thrown into a fire, it will quickly burn out or somehow ignite it, while an Indian candle will burn three to four times longer thanks to this inventive design. What are Indian and Finnish candles that served as a prototype for the Ukrainian portable fire? What design features make it unique and environmentally friendly? And how did a business trainer become a survival expert? Watch next in the program to find out the answers to these questions. Generations of children in the United States and the Soviet Union grew up in fear of a full-scale nuclear war. The topic of survival on radioactive wastelands has become part of popular culture, which led to the publication of books and the production of films and video games. But some people got rid of their fear in another way, namely they stocked up with emergency kits, duck shelters or arranged long trips into the wilderness. So the movement of the survivors was born. In the 1970s they already had their periodicals, and today you can find dozens of internet forums devoted to this topic. Mikola Palamarchuk does not expect the end of the world at all. He simply has a sporting interest as his main hobby. It was about 8 years, maybe 10 years ago. I really liked it. Then I became addicted to the sport of hunting, fishing and the theme of survival. It was interesting for me. I tried to light up various types of fires at that time. And then when I saw an Indian candle, I immediately wanted to light a fire from using this method. It is believed that even in the 16th century this device was seen by European colonizers and adapted from Indian tribes. The usual log is split into four parts, where the core is cut out and pulled back with a rope or a wire. Inside this structure the fire will consume the wood evenly and the flame will become like a candle. The fact is that Mikola made many such devices during many of his campaigns and fishing trips. There are close analogs like a Finnish candle, for example. It is made differently. A log is taken and a vertical cut is made using a chainsaw and some kind of incendiary liquid. As a rule, from chainsaw, gasoline is poured inside and then it is ignited and it burns. But it has one main drawback, that is that it burns very quickly. 
In addition, it is necessary to dig up some land under this candle, so that air can flow better into it. These techniques for setting a fire are well known to all survivors, or even to simple hikers. However, Mikola looked at the Indian candle from the point of view of a man who does not have the time or the opportunity to look for a suitable log that is cut in a special way and kindled. Making a few simple improvements, he received the first prototype of today's turbo campfire, though he did not immediately understand its commercial value. When I took this Indian candle on hunting and fishing trips and to some picnics, all my friends asked me, why don't you sell this stuff? But I just had something to be engaged in, and somehow I did not understand. Yes, I realized that this was a cool thing. But he did not believe that someone needs such a turbo campfire for hiking. Mikola started from a totally opposite business, delivering drinking water to offices. And in recent years, he conducted business trainings. And only recently he decided to take a step into the unknown and spend time and resources on a new product. Mikola wrote about his business in social networks and could not possibly expect what would happen next. I asked for reposts, and in a week I received more than 10,000 reposts. We were bombarded with orders and we were unable to fulfill the orders on time. This is about demand. Is it there or not? It was such a reliable test of demand. What impressed thousands of users so much? Mikola Palamarchuk agreed to disclose the main secrets of turbo campfire production and also to confirm his words by experiment in the field. How it's made? It all began in a garage. Already in the winter I moved to a heated room, because in the garage everything would be damp, and it simply would not burn. So we decided to move into the carpentry shop, where it is warm and cozy. Today several professional carpenters work with him, but only because of the large volumes of manual work the production process itself is quite simple. One of the main constructive solutions that Nikola devised was to get rid of unnecessary elements of the Indian candle. It is the wire, which had to pull the sound log. The turbo campfire is created from one piece of a pine tree. The trees are not cut specifically for its production. Nikola especially uses byproducts of a sawmill. Dead wood or cut pieces from the production of log houses. When they cut round logs, they, as a rule, are 6 meters long. But they do not always need 6 meters. It is a garden house, so there is less need. There are always some short edges, so we agreed to buy these cut-offs, and we are currently producing our products from them. Logs for a turbo campfire should have a length of 40 centimeters. They are peeled from the bark and processed so that the outer surface becomes smooth. The billet is not impregnated with a combustible substance and is not cut into four parts. Instead, a hole that is a few centimeters in diameter is drilled from the top down, but in any case, not through it, like an Indian candle. Another solution is used. A hole is bored from the side. What it allows us, it does not matter what surface there is. We can put it in snow, on sand, even in water, if it's not deeper than this height. And it turns out that we have traction, so there is absolutely no need for any surface preparation. Instead of making a dig under the log for air circulation, Mikola drills a horizontal hole that is connected with the vertical one. It turns out something like a fireplace, but instead of smoke, a flame bursts out from above. That is why it is called a turbo brush, because of the difference in pressure, as air naturally circulates inside, supporting the fire. But how to set fire to a drilled log from within? For this purpose, a special incinerator is provided in the lower channel. It is a mixture of sawdust with paraffin. Above it is a special long match. It is a mixture of sawdust with paraffin. Above it is a special long match that will reach the incinerator. To ignite it, you need to have matches or a lighter. We think that when someone goes into a forest, they get this effect all by default. We just set fire to a match and insert it into the bottom hole to control it so the fire is set. That's it, and our Wagner burns for a few hours. Now Mikola produces four models of turbo campfires weighing from 3 to 7 kilograms. The first, the lightest one, burns about for an hour and a half, the second one for two hours, the third one for three, and the heaviest fourth respectively four hours. All these are the calculated indicators, but we decided not to believe the inventor on the floor and conduct an experiment in the forest near Kiev. 
for is observing all the rules of fire safety. So, at about 3 a.m., Mikola set fire to all four turbo fires and the process began. After 1 hour and 15 minutes, the first model turns into pieces of charcoal. It's pretty close to the stated 1 and a half hours. The second looks not very good. Can it stand for 2 hours? The turbo campfire, which should have flashed for 2 hours, fell down just in an hour and 34 minutes. This is a clear shortcoming. Mikola explained that this shortfall was due to objective conditions. It depends on the weather, in particular the humidity of the air. If it's very dry or hot, it will burn faster. If it is damp, it will burn out slower. When it depends on which part of the tree the log was cut from, if it is from the bottom of the tree, it will be denser, heavier, and it will burn longer. Two hours and 23 minutes, an early fall down again. In the wreckage, the fire flickers for about half an hour, not reaching to three. So then we have the fourth, most massive model. The burning tower lasted 3 hours and 36 minutes, the embers were smoldering up to 4 hours. The results are not too different from those that were provided, especially considering different factors. Mikola Palamarchuk also was satisfied with the field test and noted that the burning time of his turbo campfires can be stretched. For example, we found ourselves in the wilderness in the morning and wanted to make a cup of tea. We set it on fire, put the kettle on to boil the water and then did not need the fire anymore. We closed the hole with grass or poured a little water into it so that it would go out. And when we needed to reignite, since we had already used the rasping, we could once again use the handle made out of a rope. It turns out that there are no needless elements in the Ukrainian turbo campfire, only missing ones. For example, it is impossible to boil the same water for tea without twigs. If the kettle is placed directly from above, the flame will be extinguished. Our boys fried meat on beer bottle caps. They just put three bottle caps in fried meat. I was surprised when I saw this, but they sent a photo, a frying pan, meat, everything is fine. In the future, we plan to produce a special stand. As a result, a universal self-sufficient kit for fire and cooking should be obtained. Mikola emphasizes that his turbo campfires should be treated the same way as usual ones, in terms of safety. In any case, you should not leave smoldering embers in the forest. The invention is hardly useful for survivalists and lovers of the most authentic recreation in the wilderness. If someone likes to collect firewood, look for wood for fire and control fire by rubbing then we should not deprive people of this pleasure with a history of tens of thousands of years. Mikola offers a ready solution for those urban residents who do not feel confident in the forest or simply do not want to waste a lot of time during their holiday. In addition, several children's camps in Ukraine have already become interested in the idea of using a turbo campfire. They write from all the neighboring countries and from far abroad. For example, people in Japan and China agree that this turbo campfire has extremely high expert potential. The most interesting thing is that I also have orders from Finland. Now we're negotiating so that in Finland, where this concept and the culture of using this outdoor natural appliance were presumably developed, many Europeans are ready to order this product from us. The Ukrainian candle has a chance to become a familiar attribute of country recreation around the world. And not only for rest and relaxation, Mikola still keeps the details in secret, but very soon there will be turbo fires with a flame of different colors. In fact, they can be used for decorative purposes, for decorating large banquets and even for romantic dates. People are more and more willing to go out into the countryside and spend time there because the pace of life and the hustle and bustle of the big city is becoming quite exhausting for many people. When people go out to relax in a natural countryside environment, their life is rejuvenated and they can breathe some fresh air. Moreover, when people sit by a fire, they are relaxed and feel better. <laughs>